Hello and welcome to the Voice of Life. This is Roger and Cheryl Hutchins, and we want to welcome you today to lesson uh, seven of the of a Jesus built church. And uh, we are excited about what God's teaching us uh, and how it's affecting the the body of Christ. Uh, want to give great testimony. A good friend of mine uh, had made some uh, request about uh, praying for. Uh, a good report for some doctor uh, examinations that he was about to have and uh, talked with him um, actually a couple of days ago and uh, man God has brought him through good report uh, a little bit uh, more testing to do but I'm gonna tell you what uh, I believe God sets us in order to get make through the test and turns around all the symptoms and everything that uh, would would try to uh, uh, rob uh, him steal kill or destroy uh, everything God has got but I'm gonna tell you the thief comes to do that but Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly and I want to pronounce life on you today by the word of the Lord by the authority of the word of God uh, death and life is set before us and we choose life hallelujah why don't you say that? I choose life. I choose Amen. Life. And uh, as we say that, just before we pray today, we're getting ready to pray. Uh, let me uh, again remind you that um, Friday night, uh, Sister Cheryl is going to be uh, speaking in Hiram, Georgia. I want you to make plans to be there. Hiram, Georgia at 7 o'clock p.m. in Hiram, Georgia. And uh, the address is, I hope you got your notebook and, and get your Bibles because you're going to need to take notes as you as you go, but in uh, in Hiram, Georgia, at 44 uh, Darby's Crossing, Office Park Suite 206C, Hiram, Georgia, 30141. It's in that office complex, and you'll have to identify which one is uh, is C. Hopefully, there'll be enough activity there that you can see uh, which way to go in and out. Uh, but but we'll be at um, uh, 44 Darby's Crossing, Office Park. Suite 206C, Hiram, Georgia, 30141. Apostle Rufus uh, Dowdy and First Lady Ingrid will be hosting that meeting. It's a meeting that's going to be, uh, it's actually going on right now. Uh, and you don't have to wait till Friday night. You can drop in on them and uh, visit. We're going we're gonna to be visiting another uh, night. But it's Women of the Word preaching a now word. Uh, and don't, don't forget, mark it down. Don't forget it. Uh, be there if you possibly can in Hiram, Georgia. Uh, Cheryl will be speaking at 7 o'clock. Amen. So we want to invite you to be there. Also on Sunday morning, uh, I'm going to be speaking in uh, Cartersville, Georgia at the Gathering Place at 1337 Joe Frank Harris Parkway, uh, Southeast Cartersville, Georgia, 30120. Uh, I hope you can be there. That'll be at 1030 on Sunday morning in the Carters in Cartersville, Georgia. So if you are in that area and you're free to come, uh, I hope you'll make plans to, to be there. Uh, and uh, one more time, 1337 Joe Frank, Par Frank Harris Parkway, Southeast Cartersville, Georgia, 30120. So uh, if you need any more information, you can message us. You can back the, uh, the video up and get the address again if I was going too fast for you. Uh, but but I love to see you. We love to, uh, to see you. We love doing the videos because we feel the anointing and feel like God's using them. Uh, but also, we love to see the people and love to meet you. Uh, we want to thank you for standing with us in your prayers and, and all. And, and I love to do that personally. I love to look you in the eye and see your beautiful eyes and your smile and uh, and thank you personally for what God is uh, doing through you because through you as you pray for us and we pray for you, we pray for our, our those that stand with us and pray with us every day. Uh, those that watch the videos, we pray that there'll be life to you and that you'll grow. Amen. And, uh, Cheryl, why don't you greet the people and then you just lead us into prayer today, okay? All right. Well, hello once again. And um, we're talking about a Jesus-built church. That's uh, the name title of the lessons we're doing. This is Lesson 7 today. And um, we just want to be a great part of that church. And we want you to be a great part of that church. 
And we Amen. talked yesterday about how in the early church, the book of Acts records that they came together in one accord, like a symphony, and they broke bread together, the bread of life. And it's a wonderful thing to have real fellowship. And um, that's our prayer, that the people of God, whatever area you're in, you will begin more and more frequently to get together, to break the bread of life, to share the things God is showing you with one another. And um, pray for our nation, and not just our nation, all the nations of the earth. There is nobody that does not need Jesus Christ. He is absolutely Amen. life. He's the way. He's the way out of your trouble. He's the way into life. He's the truth. It doesn't matter how many books you read or anything else. There's only one source of truth, and that is Jesus Christ. Now, if you do not know Jesus Christ as a personal friend and as your personal Savior and Lord, then we want to invite you now to pray with us because he is the greatest person you'll ever know. And he's very much alive, even though he's invisible to the natural eyes, you will begin to see him with your spiritual eyes. Amen. So just go ahead and pray with us and join with us and let Jesus Christ begin to speak to you and teach you and bring you up into a higher realm of life. Father, we yes, thank Jesus. you. Almighty God, yes, the one God. true and living God, Shanda we thank you Christ. for your people, the church. We thank you for those listening to this video who may not even understand much of what we're saying or what's going on, but you're able to teach them, Lord Jesus Christ, and you love them. That is exactly why you went to the cross. It's why you took the spitting in the face and the beating in the face and the stripes on your back and, and the horrible crucifixion. You did that for us, for humanity and for the creation to restore us to life. And that only comes through you. We give you praise and honor today. And... Um, we thank you for the hearts that you're touching, that you let people know who do not know you now how very much you love them and how you're not angry with them, you're not disappointed with them. You just want to have that true communion and yes. fellowship and be able to love them and provide for them. So we thank you, Father, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Now, if you remember yesterday, we, we left off, uh, we were going into the First Timothy, the third chapter. Two verses here I want to read is the, the 15th and 16th. And remember, we're talking about a Jesus-built church. And there's some things that a lot of times I, I, I find in our culture and in our day that people want to get their own concepts of what everything should look like, and, and it doesn't matter if it violates uh the principles of God. But I want to tell you, in, in building the church, Jesus does not deviate from the pattern or from the blueprint that's laid out. Uh, we read out of Isaiah, uh, 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 Isaiah 48, I believe it was, uh, how that the prophets prophesied uh, concerning the church and concerning the, uh, those of us that are known in this day as uh, the body of Christ. But uh, in the 15th verse, he said, But if I tarry long, this is Paul talking to Timothy, but if I tarry long that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God. Now remember, the house of God is not a building. It's the household of God or the, uh, the, the, those that are, of us that are connected by blood, the blood of Jesus Christ. In my natural family, I'm connected by the blood that flows through our veins. In my spiritual family, I'm connected and you're connected. We're all connected uh, because you're part of a spirit, the spiritual family. We're connected by the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on Calvary. That blood brought us in uh, to uh, the household of God. Uh, and now we are one. We're joined together uh, unto him. Uh, how the oldest behave thyself. Uh, thyself in the house of God which is the 
is the church, the house of God, which is the church. Remember, the church is the ecclesia. It's not the building you go to on Sunday morning or Wednesday night or vacation Bible school or whatever. It is uh, the uh, the people, the call out ones uh, that's called out of the world unto the marvelous light. So uh, that's not saying we shouldn't gather together, that we, that we shouldn't uh, assemble ourselves and have a place that we go into uh, that, that we recognize as a place where we gather and where we uh, meet uh, to worship our Lord together and to uh, develop our uh, unity in our relationships. But he says the church of the living God, which is the pillar and ground of truth. Now, uh, the church is what establishes Jesus Christ in the earth today. Jesus Christ is the truth. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So now, uh, the church is what establishes his presence in the earth today. That happened on the day of Pentecost. Jesus told him, said, if I go away, I and my Father are going to come again and take up our boat in you. Uh, and that happened on the day of Pentecost. Now, you know, uh, think about it. I'm, I'm not even going to get into the rabbit trails that that can lead into, but uh, just read John 14. You see that that happened. Uh, and then right on into the book of Acts. And you see that that's already happened uh, in on the day of Pentecost that, the, that Jesus and his Father agreeing in one, took up their boat in the church, in the believer, at 120 in the upper room, and then the promise went unto the children, unto the children's children, and unto us, because we're, 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 we're far off 2,000 years later, but here we are, full of the Holy Ghost, born again, and we are the, 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 the church, the pillar and ground of truth. So, uh, you know, don't let anybody shake you from, from that. Uh, amen. Verse 16 says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Now, to understand that, you have to go back to uh, John, the first chapter, St. John, the first chapter. Uh, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. On down about the 14th verse, he said, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father. So when we begin to understand that now, who was Jesus? Jesus was God manifested in the flesh. So whenever we, we comprehend that and we understand that, uh, then we begin to understand the mystery of godliness. Now, why is that important here? Uh, all the way in the book of Timothy, whenever John's, uh, Paul's talking to Timothy. It's important here because uh, he's still being manifest in the earth today, but not in, in just Jesus' body that was born from a virgin Mary. Uh, he's being manifest in a many, many membered body now, uh, in the church who is the body of Christ, the many member body of Christ, uh, now there is a manifestation. So we still recognize that God is being manifest in the flesh. Okay? Uh, it says justified in the spirit. Uh, I think, uh, did you point out that the word the wasn't there in the original? Uh, we can read it like this, justified in spirit. Uh, you know, let me tell you, Jesus received probably more ridicule and more uh, condemning from men than anybody had ever received before and ever, and nor has afterward. Uh, but he was justified in the spirit. Why? Spirit, capital spirit here. He was justified by the, the Holy, by, by the, his heavenly Father that lived and dwelled in him. How's the church justified today? Did you say the same way? <laughs> that how's the church justified today? We're certainly not justified by our good deeds. We're not justified by, uh, you know, but, but the, the true church, say true church. True church. Because we got to understand now, he's not just talking about people that's, that's gathering in buildings on, on a certain day of the week. It could be Saturday for that matter. I've been saying Sunday, but, but some people meet on Saturday. It could be any, you know, uh, 
Thank God we can meet together and have fellowship and worship together. But we're justified. Uh, we're justified in spirit, uh, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, uh, believed on in the uh, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Now, I noticed something there when it said received up into glory. You're not going. You're never going to see the glory of God by looking down. Yeah. <laughs> now listen to me. Uh, if you walk around with that "woe is me" agony and despair, we call it the he all religion uh, back in the day. But uh, "woe is me" and agony is you looking down. You're always uh, looking at the th the the lower state of everything uh, that comes along. Uh, but see, received up into glory. Now he is positioned at the right hand of the Father. Now I'm not trying to put him way out there. I'm just saying uh, uh, spiritually, positionally, uh, it's up. We begin to look. Do you want to see the glory of God? You're not going to see it by looking at the uh, at the dust realm, we call it. Why do we call it that? Well, because Adam was created out of the dust of the earth and, and, and out of the Adamic nature is how we fall short of the glory of God. But thank God there's a new nature and that's the nature of the last man, Adam. That's the nature of the Christ that's living within uh, his church today. So now we begin to understand that mystery <laughs> is being unveiled. It was unveiled, first of all, it began to be opened up. He was the door. Ooh, glory to God. He was the door uh, for us to enter in and to understand that mystery. But guess what? Uh, as uh, we become the avenue, if you will, that the mystery begins to unfold. Amen. Even, even at his uh, crucifixion, they didn't understand uh, that that not only the gospel was for the Jew, but it was for the uh, Gentile as well. Yeah. Until uh, until God visited Peter and that that uh, sheet came down, that, that vision of the sheet came down and, and all the, the animals, clean animals, uh, unclean animals came before him and, and the angel said, uh, Peter, eat, take and eat. And he said, oh, I'm not me. I'm not... Uh, not touching any unclean thing. And, and that was a door God began to show him that I'm not only cleansed uh, uh, Israel, I'm not only cleansed the Hebrew, I have cleansed uh, as many as will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and, and at the same time, God was moving on Cornelius' house and came there. And guess what? Revelation came again. To the one that, 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 that it was revealed to uh, that Jesus was the Christ, uh, and, and Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, flesh and blood, hath revealed this to you. Same thing. Here Peter gets another visitation, and all of a sudden, uh, uh, wow, uh, the, the Gentiles receive the Holy Ghost, just like they did on the day of Pentecost, just like the Jews did. And now, uh, now here Peter is uh, realizing, wow, uh, God's not only... Uh, bringing into this church uh, the Jews, but he's bringing in the Gentiles. And then Paul began to pick up on that, and he begins to be a Who would have ever thought that uh, in that day, whenever they were under the law and under uh, the, the bondage of law, who would have ever thought uh, that, that God would take material called Gentiles and begin to call them lively stones. Begin to begin to use them to build his church. Why did he have to do it? Because man would not have chosen that way. But thank God he chose uh, to build his church his way. And I believe that's very important uh, for us to know. Uh, now, Cheryl, where did I stop? Uh, 15, okay. 16. Oh, no, this is 16. 16. Uh, he was justified in the Spirit, seen of angels, preached to the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. I'm going to tell you, I'm saying, will you join me in looking up? I'm not talking about standing up, gazing into the sky. I'm talking, I'm talking about looking into a higher place uh, than we walk in. The church, I'm afraid, uh, the church as we have known in the secular church, I'm not talking about the true church now. 
uh, has looked into the dust rim, into the earthly rim. If you don't believe it, just look at some of the activities. Look at some of the things. And I'm try trying to be con condemning. I'm, I'm hearing Holy Spirit say, share this with you. See, why does the church not see the glory? Because all around us, we've surrounded ourselves. I take that we back because I'm not doing it anymore. Uh, but, but those that have been, said they were preachers, so there were men and women of God, they have surrounded themselves uh, with people that's ministering out of the dust realm rather than uh, ministering out of a lower realm, if you will, ministering out of their Adamic nature, ministering out of entertainment rather than worship. Uh, but let me tell you, I don't, I don't mean to go here. And sometimes I feel like I'm getting, uh, being too hard, but I, I don't feel that today. I feel uh, like you need to hear and know uh, if you really want a relationship with God that surpasses uh, the natural mind and the natural realm, uh, you need to get your mind. They used to tell us, Cheryl, to get our mind out of the gutter. Uh, you know, and that's where I, that's where Adam lives. Adam lives in the gutter. But thank God we have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, and we don't have to live in the gutter. We don't have to have our minds in the gutter. We can let this mind be in us, which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. <laughs> I'll take a breath and let Cheryl take over a while. <laughs> well, there's just a couple things I want to point out. First of all, um, Paul, as Roger said, was writing to Timothy, who was a young man. He was in training for his position in God, in the church, uh, probably a pastor or something along those lines. But Paul wrote to him and said, I'm writing these things to you in this letter, the whole letters to Timothy, so that you might know how you ought to behave yourself in the house of God. Amen. And um, there is a behavior for the house of God. Amen. In fact, the Bible in different places tells us don't rush headlong into God's presence. You go into it reverently and with humility and you enter his courts with thanksgiving and praise and these types of things. And um, it, ju it just seems like many people today who gather together in buildings, it's not always a place where there's appropriate behavior. And there actually are other scriptures we're gonna talk about in some of the other lessons that go into this a little bit more. but. When I was growing up as a child, um, it was so stressed in the church about being reverent in the house of God. Yeah. Jesus even had to go to the temple and cleanse the temple because things had gotten so out of hand. And he vehemently, very strongly said, my house shall be called the house of prayer. Yes, he did. And there's nothing wrong with having a, um, joyfulness in the house of God because joyfulness is part of prayer also. Praise is part of prayer. Prayer is communicating with God. But there is a behavior um, that is to be maintained in the house of God. We don't go in and take this lightly. This is what it says, which is the church of the living God. We need to believe Amen. and act like our God is a living God, that His presence is there with us. Amen. We need to reflect on these things some and, and take another look at all of this. And don't be so flippant about our attitudes and our words in church and things like this. We need to come back to a reverent state. We're serving the one true living God. Amen. No other. And there's only one Savior that died for the whole world. Only one, Jesus Christ. And these things we need to be put in remembrance of, that there is a behavior. Doesn't mean you have to be stoic and all of those things, but it certainly doesn't mean you need to be running around the church and hooping and hollering and children getting in and out and up and down to the bathroom and this and that and the other. They need to be trained and taught about where in the presence of the Holy God. Amen. You know, 
the last part of this as Roger was just expounding on talks about the glory of God. Amen. The glory of God is when things happen. And if we want the glory of God, we've got to come back to what the Word of God says about how that happens. And there's reasons why, you know, so many people today want to see miracles. They want to see somebody get out of a wheelchair, or blind eyes open. And I think all that's wonderful and great. But for me, the very greatest and biggest miracle is my life being changed seeing a heart change, seeing somebody's mind get free of Amen. all the turmoil Glory and all of this stuff and come to a level place of harmony within yourself, spirit, soul, and body, where there's health and there's life and there's words that can bring life to somebody else. This, to me, is a big manifestation Amen. of the glory of God. <laughs> so anyhow, that's just what I wanted to say and put us in remembrance of these things. We serve a holy God and he said that holiness is beautiful. So let's don't miss out on the beautiful things of God. Let's take another look and reflect on it and let's see if we can't see the glory of God really manifested in and through the church more and more. Amen. You know, Everything God God has, the scripture says, he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. So that's what I believe God wants to do within us is to stir up or, or, or you used to say, uh, whet your appetite for something. Yeah. You know, and uh, you know, I hope the word of God, the more you taste of uh, the word, the more you taste of God, the more you want uh, of him. So uh, I pray today as you listen to the word of God, as you hear what God's saying, that there's a fresh hunger stirring in you. Um, you know, I realize today uh, for us, for you to begin to call for people to come up higher in the Lord or to get drawn near to God, uh, then uh, sometimes there's a tendency to back off because uh, flesh uh, doesn't want to, to um, you know, people would rather inherit it in the flesh, but flesh and blood uh, can't inherit the kingdom of God. Right. It has to be by the Spirit. And there's a working of the Spirit happening uh, in us. There's a working of the Spirit uh, that is present right now on these messages, on on the uh, uh, on the videos that I believe you can uh, come up higher. Like I said earlier, you're never going to see the glory by looking down. You're never going to see the glory by by looking at the flesh. And one way of looking at the flesh is is what's going, what feels good to me. You know, I I believe God wants us to prosper and be in health, and I believe He wants us to. Uh, I, I believe that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. He wants us to have joy. But if we go by our fleshly uh, nature, our, our fleshly desires, uh, we're never going to move into the glory of God. Uh, you know, I prophesied coming into uh, into this year, 2019, uh, that, that it's a year that God is going to begin to reveal His glory in a, a higher manner. And I believe that, that right now this is part of it. As we preach the Word of God, teach the Word of God, uh, that, that you're going to begin to hunger uh, to come up uh, higher. Now, we're, we're preaching into other places. Our time is up, so let me remind you. Um, let, let me just say one more thing. I, I want to be sure I clarify this. When we read in this scripture, Behave thyself in the house of God, we do have a tendency to look at that as the building. But we are the church of God, and we're to behave ourselves with one another because we're in the presence of God and we're carriers of the presence of God. So I'm not just talking about the building where we meet together, but I'm talking about being in relationship and fellowship wherever we are together. Things should not be going on outside the church, by the church, that is against the Word of God. 
Well, our time's up. We God bless you. The, the point is that we're the church no matter where right. we are. We're the church <laughs> at home, at the marketplace, uh, in the, the gathering place where we come, the, the assembly building. God bless you, and we'll see you again tomorrow.